Hey guys, it's Melanie. Welcome back. I hope your week is off to a fantastic start. In today's video, I want to share an updated uh, foundation, contour, and blush routine. I've gotten a lot of requests recently in the last couple of months from what I think are mostly new subscribers for some makeup tutorials. I think what those of you who are new maybe don't realize is that there is actually quite a bit of makeup content here on my channel already, but I honestly haven't shared much in I would say the last like four or five years. And that is for a couple of reasons, and I'll just mention a few of those really quickly. I think the main one for me was that when I first started my channel back in 2010, yes, I've been here a long time, I started with purely makeup content, and I got really into it. And unfortunately, what that resulted in was me being really passionate about makeup. And what ended up happening was that Every time there was a new release from my favorite brand, I was all too happy to drive down to my local Sephora and Ulta and to pick everything up. Every time the holiday releases came around, I just clamored to get my hands on as many as I could. And what ended up happening was that I had a makeup uh, collection that just exploded. I had so much stuff. I have an Alex 9 drawer over to my right here and an Alex 5 drawer over to my left. These were completely full, like makeup was exploding out of these storage systems that I had. And it kind of got to a point where it overwhelmed me. And so then I started decluttering and I started giving a lot of stuff away. And when I was doing that, I was realizing, oh my gosh, I am passing so much money on to you know other people most of these products had only been used in some cases a few times and i just kind of got bored with them or i moved on to something better or different um, whatever the reason was i had just accumulated so much makeup that it really started overwhelming me and it felt great as I was purging everything and gifting those things along to friends and family who were interested. Like, I love being able to share with my friends and family. But again, it was just starting to really hit me, like just the dollar amounts that I was essentially giving away. And um, I just decided to pull back. And when I did that, um, I just didn't have the latest and greatest. Now, don't get me wrong, I didn't completely like cut makeup spending altogether, but I would say I cut it by about 75%. So I was still, you know, purchasing some stuff each year, but not nearly as much as before. And um, I just figured that like, you guys wouldn't be interested in seeing me using my old makeup. You know, I certainly talk about what I'm loving and using in my weekly beauty chit chat every single week but um you know other than that like in terms of tutorials and things like that i just assume that you guys wouldn't want to see me using you know an eyeshadow palette that i've had for years like this is the original tart tartlet palette i remember driving to ulta and picking this up when it was first released am i still using it yes so, but I do realize that most people, you know, when they purchase makeup, they tend to use it for a number of years. So honestly, a lot of the things that I still have, you probably still have in your collection as well. And um, yeah, I'm more than happy to start sharing some tutorials here and there again, but just know that it's probably not going to be with like, you know, the latest releases from Natasha Denona or Hourglass or tart or you know whatever necessarily i might just be pulling things from my collection that are six seven years old by the way i do disinfect my powder products yearly and cream products i just i don't really purchase a lot of those but lip products i do you know toss those out when they start to go bad <laughs> so um yeah anyway um, because you guys have put in some requests, I want to go ahead and honor those. So today I'm going to share the foundation routine. I am a powder foundation girly, so do be aware of that. It just works better with my oily skin. And then tomorrow I'm going to share this kind of simple everyday eyeshadow look with you. So if you are interested in either of those videos, be sure to stay tuned. Um, that's what we're doing for the next couple days. 
I do list and link everything that I'm using in the order that I am applying it in the description box. So be sure to check that out if I forget to mention the name of something. And I hope that this is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and let's go ahead and get into the current powder foundation routine that is really helping me to keep my makeup looking as fresh as long as possible into the day. Um, I do have a very oily skin type, like I may have mentioned, and um, this particular routine helps me get to at least seven o'clock in the evening before the oil really starts to break through. So this is all day wear for me. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, let's go ahead and apply some foundation, contour, and while we're at it, some blush to this face of mine. I will go ahead and list and link everything in the order that I am applying it in the description box down below. So if you wanna go check out some of these products yourself, um, I put the links for everything down there. Um, I already have my SPF on my face. This is the obviously last step of my skincare routine but I actually kind of consider this the first step of my makeup routine. I like to give this about 20 minutes to fully settle into my skin before applying my makeup. SPF is such an important part of my everyday routine. Um, and this particular one is really actually great with the foundation routine that I'm gonna share with you guys today. So after letting that sit for about 15, 20 minutes, I will go in with my primer of choice for that day. Right now I'm trying to use up the Euphoria pregame primer. And as you can see, um, I am, I'm probably gonna be done with this before the end of April, which makes me happy. I actually really like this primer a lot, but I think for me personally with my oily skin, the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse is even better. So, but if you have more like normal combo type skin, you might really like this pregame primer. So definitely worth checking out. It's been a good one. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and um, let's get started. I'm just gonna grab my mirror and hopefully it's not gonna be too much in the way here. Um, okay, first thing I'm gonna do is put some setting powder over top of my primer. I do this because I feel like it helps to um, absorb a little bit more of that uh, oil that can pop up during the latter parts of the day. I would consider this a very long wearing foundation for me personally. And I will warn you, I exclusively do powder foundation. It just works better for my oily skin. I don't like the feel of liquid foundation on my skin. Um, and I don't like how heavy it often looks. So for me, I have been a lover of the Laura Geller Balance and Brighten for many, many years. Um, so yeah, I know, hate to disappoint you. <laughs> it, this is all powder, you guys. I have oily skin and the liquids are just not my thing. So first thing I'm gonna do is take a, this is actually just a Real Techniques sponge and I have the Fenty Pro Filter Instant Retouch Setting Powder in the shade Butter here. And I'm going to put some of that powder onto the face of this sponge and I'm going to press that into my skin. And what this does for me is that it helps to absorb some of that excess oil as it comes through during the latter parts of the day. This also helps to blur the look of my pores a little bit. Um, it's just been a really great way for me to extend the wear of my makeup especially during the summer months when my oil production kicks up a little bit again. So I'm just gonna put that all over. I'm oily all over my face, not just in my T-zone. Like I hear people say like, oh, I just have an oily T-zone. <laughs> How nice for you. <laughs> I wish it was just my T-zone. It is, it is literally every part of my face that's oily. So again, I'm literally just kind of pressing that into the skin really working on blending that out nicely. I even put it across my lids. I do have oily lids as well. I have to use an eye primer every single day. So um, yeah, I am just a greasy mess, I guess. <laughs> it's my lot in life, it's fine, it's fine. 
Okay, um, let's get out my favorite here. Laura Geller Balance and Brighten. I've loved this powder foundation for years. Here's the kind of, I guess, ironic thing. This is not the best color match for me, <laughs> but I color correct it, so it's okay. Um, I am gonna take, this is, this is a Milani bronzer brush and it's one of my favorites for powder foundation. If I'm looking for a slightly more, I don't wanna say like sheer coverage, but if I'm not looking for super full coverage, this is my go-to. Um, if I am wanting a much heavier coverage of powder foundation, which, you know, for special occasions maybe, I will use a much denser, um, large brush like this. This one's from BK Beauty. This is the 105. So um, you can kind of play with the, um, with the coverage level of powder foundation that way. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take the shade Fair, and I'm gonna load up my brush with some of the product, and I'm gonna start buffing that into my skin. And I think this is really the key with powder foundation is that you really do take the time to buff it into the skin and not just do like a quick swipe here and there. Um, it really is best to work it into the skin. Oh geez, this hair of mine. Usually I'm doing this before my hair is dry. <laughs> I did not think to bring in a hair tie but yeah I'm just buffing 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 the coverage that I get with this particular brush I would consider a like light medium type of coverage which is great for me for every day when I am going back in I'm not like rubbing my brush in here. I'm just doing, you know, a light brush across the top to grab some more product. I take it all the way up to underneath my eyes and even over the lids. Really work that in around the nose. And what this does is it just kind of evens my skin tone out a little bit. So the next thing I'm gonna do is color correct this ever so slightly. Now the way that I'm doing it currently is with the now discontinued Laura Geller Baked Elements Foundation in the shade Porcelain. Um, so it is a much lighter shade. I have other things that I've used in the past, like the Wander Beauty powder foundation their shade I think the shade light is a great one to pair with this as well um you might find a much better color fit at Laura Geller than I do I find that a lot of her powder products lean more um neutral and cool toned if you will whereas I need uh I have quite a bit of yellow in my skin so I prefer you know uh warmer warmer shades. All right. So once again, I'm just going to do the same thing where I go in with some of the product and buff it into the skin. You know, don't smash the brush in like you don't need to like do this. Just, you know, lightly buff. But I think the buffing really is the key when it comes to powder foundation in terms of getting it to look really good. Alright. I really do like to take my time with this because it just ends up looking so natural on my skin. A little bit more down here. Now, after I basically just matted everything down, 
I am going to go in with the new Laura Geller Baked Blurring and Setting Powder in the shade uh, Porcelain Fair. This one is an excellent color match for me. And I'm gonna bring just a little bit of a slight glow back into my skin. So what I will do is just apply it across my forehead, take a little more, go down the bridge of my nose and my chin, Take a little more. Focus it mostly on the cheekbones, but also bring it down just a little bit. Grab a touch more, other side. Underneath the eyes. And there we go. So it just brings back just a touch of a glow to my skin so that it's not super, super matte. All right, next let's do some contour. Um, I'm gonna be using two BK brushes for this. Um, one is the 107, and then the second brush is the 206. This is actually an eyeshadow brush and it's slightly pinched. I just find that this works great for doing the contour on the sides of my nose. So um, that's what I use that brush for. This is the Kevin Aquan, the sculpting powder in the shade medium. Uh, I fell in love with this because of my friend Susan. So thanks, Susan. Um, I like to sculpt my cheekbones as well as just around my jawline here, a little bit around my hairline and then down the sides of my nose. So those are the areas that I focus on. So I take the product and start kind of towards the ear area back here, right underneath my natural cheekbones. This is where my cheekbones are, like right here. So I'm just going right underneath that and really buffing that into my skin. Sometimes I don't spend a lot of time blending my contour and if I'm filming and I watch the video back, I realize. <laughs> so usually for a few days after that, I'm a lot more careful about it, but yeah, just make sure that you are blending that back into the hairline. I tend to bring it up a little bit over here. I'm gonna take just a little bit more and now I'm gonna go right underneath my jaw and just sculpt that a little tiny bit. Little around the hairline up here. And you can already kind of tell just how much more sculpted this side is compared to the other. Let's go ahead and do this side, find that cheekbone and start blending. this jawline over here okay next let's take this smaller um, eyeshadow brush get a little bit of the product on there and then I'm gonna sculpt my nose I tend to just go down like the sides of the bridge of my nose here and that thins my nose out just a touch. I don't have a really big schnoz, <laughs> but I like to thin it out just a touch. I get a little bit more fancy with this when it comes to like special occasions and stuff, but for every day, I keep it pretty, pretty straightforward. Nothing super fancy. So afterwards, I like to take no extra product on the brush that I used for my cheekbones and underneath my jaw 
and I like to pinch it and just kind of blend that out a little further. But you can already see what a difference that makes on the side there. Blending really is key when it comes to contour, I feel like. Again, pinch the sides to keep it kind of thin. All right, there we go, there's some contour. The last thing that I like to do before I go in with my blush is take the brush that I use for my powder foundation and just kind of go over and make sure that everything is nicely blended. I don't want any harsh lines. Okay, and then next, um, I'm gonna take this very ancient, uh, I think this is a Sonia Kasha brush. Uh, the, the label and the number of the brush rubbed off a long time ago, but I'm pretty sure this is from Sonia Kasha. And I am going to take, let's see, I should use something that's currently still available. How about, let's see, I'm gonna do kind of a plummy eye look today. So let's do Mood Exposure uh, from the Ambient Lighting powder palette here this one um i love mood exposure it's so pretty just gonna load up my blush brush and i like to go just right on top of my cheekbones and then blend down into the contour and back towards my hairline to give me a more lifted look This blush is absolutely stunning, you guys. I just love the glow that I get from the Hourglass blushes. They're so pretty. Ugh, look at that. It's so beautiful. So just a little bit of a flush. I think that's plenty. Going for a pretty, like, everyday average look here. And that's... That's it. That's how I do my powder foundation. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, check out the description box for the links to everything. I cannot link this brush because, like I said, this is ancient, but everything else will be down there for you. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the eyeshadow tutorial. Take care.